The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts that is discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that readeth not to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. As we are noticing the importance of the word of the Lord, we are with the seven phrases which my Lord spoke on the cross to answer this Zacharyah, but this guy claims that Lord Jesus Christ was not crucified. And when as such, the things claimed in yesterday's tape, the POGM website, Barwit, they proclaimed the Quran was been made written by the Roman Catholicism so that they could control the, the Muslims of that time by following, making them to follow other God. In return, that also could be under their power. But we don't know what is what, whether that site is right or whether that information is right. But it is our duty on our behalf to take it into consideration, to thoroughly train our believers, even as such the Christendom pulpit leaders, so that each and every time whenever such kind of a cult will rise, who are infidel, who are skeptic, who are a rationalist or empiricist, which can be dealt in their respective fields, as such when we know Bible doctrine in accurate information. And that accuracy of the information demands a daily preparation on behalf of the pastor teacher who is communicating this word so that he can prepare and be self-sufficient or self-sufficiency in the manner of such not only defend such kind of a cult of Christian science or false imaginations but even rise forth and give them a challenging debate wherewith it is the word of the Lord which is always right and apart from that the word of the Lord revealed to us from the mind of my Christ that is Bible doctrine there is no other source wherewith you can think because the word of the God judges the human heart with perfect accuracy and it discloses all its most secret springs of thoughts and actions the one special way in which we may know that this is the word of God is this that it judges with perfect accuracy all the secrets of our thoughts and actions the poor Samaritan woman who was there when Lord Jesus Christ came near the well to ask him water she said after when she was told about her that to the entire people come see a man that told me all things that where I did is not this the Christ she judged that a man who could lay bare before her the deep secrets of our heart and of our life must needs to be the long expected Messiah and she judged it rightly in like manner today we can say come see this book that is the book of Bible doctrine which is my mind of Christ that can tell to me or that told to me all things that where I did is not this the word of God exactly the phrase used by the Samaritan woman which has been told in John 4 that come see a man that told me all things that ever I did is not this the Christ exactly now the things happen come see a book which is Bible doctrine that told me all the things that ever I did is not this the word of God no man can read the heart but God no book can disclose the human heart but Lord's Bible doctrine inasmuch as the Bible perfectly discloses the human heart we may know even had we know other mode of judging that the Bible is the war of God and apart from this word of God irrespective of other facts or fictions or writings written by such and such Prophet Muhammad are written so written, right, written by Buddhism what evidence do they have whether they have been God breathed or they have been taken into consideration as such that these angels have revealed unto them and the scientific and non-scientific information wherewith they think they are claiming is right which is all sheer rot it is the word of the Lord alone which defends every form of apostate cultism which has been rising to the core our Christian science or anything you consider including this religions who are spiritually dead who are dichotomy in nature who do not know what exactly is their mind which is telling to them but rather they are thinking to themselves what we are preaching is right what we are doing is right it is as good that they confess they are blind rather than to profess that they profess they are having sight and that profession of having sight is what makes them to realize that they are failures to the core 
and even as such, not only failures to the core, they are telling that I am right, I can judge myself, what the Bible is there, why, how, and how it can judge. An argument which they considered because they condemned such kind of an argument because the word of God is not by Bible, but other aspects are such kind of a minds known as infidel, skeptic, rationalist, empiricism, who can be met with other grounds. But it is impossible for any upright man to ponder the simple fact that the Bible is perfectly unfolds every nature of man, his thoughts, his feelings, his desires, his affections, his false imaginations and right imaginations, and the most secret chambers of his moral being, and not be convinced that the Bible is the very word of God, which is very alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, which pierces even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and it is a dishonor of thoughts and intents of the heart. That's why Bible, it is the word of God. And we do not have any other options apart from that to think or to realize that Bible is not the word of God. So we are not following it. No way, no chance at all. The only way for heaven is Bible. The only truth revealed in the Bible is Lord Jesus Christ. So what we do, we can go to heaven only by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the true Lord. Even he has promised that he is going to come back again. He has promised that he shall reign with us thousand years in this earth. He has promised the new heaven and the new earth. New, new earth. It just suspenses the things. It is not past or it is going to be. The Bible doctrine as told as the heaven and earth will pass away. Even not a single word of him will be not in, will not be passed away without the fulfillment of his words. But we do not have that assurance in other scriptures. So these people, they are considering themselves that Quran is right. They are considering the things to be right. So they debate over the Quran and they say that Lord Jesus Christ was not crucified. And they are also saying that he was not a divine. He was just a human. All these things are satanic and blasphemous to the core. And they are evil to such kind of an extent. They are not only deceiving themselves, but they are taking multitudes and millions of believers of this human race, even as such like the pastor Rockadin and other people who are not totally prepared to make and to believe and to realize, okay, Quran also might be wrong. That, that is a sheer rot of blasphemy, as the Roman Catholicism pronounced two weeks or three weeks back, stating to the fact that Lord used evolution theory, Lord used Big Bang theory to formulate this earth. What a sheer rot of blasphemy is that. Likewise, even these pastor Rockadins who are going to such kind of a debate, coming out with a conclusions that even Quran also might be right that is a total sheer out of a blasphemy and a failure on the duty which has been imparted on the part of a responsible shoulder which has been designated as a pastor teacher the duty of a pastor teacher is quite tough if he's not doing his duty such kind of apostate leaders will rise up and this apostate leaders when they go to debate they are going to get dethroned to my lord not glorification to my lord because a faithfully prepared right pastor teacher is not oily, greasy, nor hampy, dampy, but rather he is the one who preaches the word with accuracy from the original languages of the scriptures through isagogical, categorical, and exegetical study of preparation, and that demands on part of a believer of a male to whom this gift has been endured or given at the moment of salvation, this person takes time to be edified. He wants to learn many subjects of the, of the concerned related topics, not only to this cult of Christian science, even as such, wherewith he considers that Bible doctrine, when it has been learnt with various categorical study of the subject, including the dispensations and the words of Kairos, even as such, the things wherewith we will study today in the subject of dispensation or the epoch or times or manifestation of the periods or the Gentile periods or the church age periods, all these things when he discerns and when he learns and when he takes in from the virgin language of the scriptures, like the Hebrew word of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 9, which meant to say the Mavet and it is a plural, it's not a singular and it represents deaths. One death represents the spiritual realm, the other death represents the physical realm. The same thing in the Greek of Thanatos and the Necros. But the people fail to realize these things because of their failure to prepare 
Bible doctrine. Nor is it merely in the word of God as the whole that we observe the intense power of discerning the thoughts and intents of the heart, but it is a detached passage in brief sentences, in a verse or clause of a verse. Look for the instances, the three words which appear, that is, he from within, wherewith what a revelation of the selfishness of a human heart to do those words contain. But we are here to look that the word of the Lord, which is Bible doctrine, is the only valid source of information which is given to us so that we can take into consideration that no matter such kind of debates which come into play, it is not our duty to be worried, but our duty to be worried is whether we are faithfully prepared to take the challenge, to accept the challenge, and to correct that dead spiritually person wherewith until unless in the privacy of his soul of his volition he takes a positive impact towards the gospel of our lord and savior jesus christ and he believes or not that is not the, until unless he takes the decision we cannot convert it because it is his own individual responsibility kept and imputed for the divine immortal soul and the divine immortal breath what he takes that he has to answer to lord what decisions you have taken even after hearing to the gospel, that is the true word of the Lord, which is Bible doctrine, that is to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and they shall be saved. But the failure on their part, the more they neglect, it is there they are responsible until and unless they believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, they are not going to become spiritually alive. The more they are spiritually dead, no matter how well we try to communicate to them the spiritual phenomena, they can never understand. The only best thing what they can understand is the gospel. But the importance of the fifth phrase is not only a warning for such kind of an unbelievers to listen upon the gospel and to come and to learn to transformation of the same chemistry from charcoal to diamond but rather it is a warning for the believers to check their edification progress and look into the things where they are hindering if they have been hindered to give top priority for bible doctrine why is it where they are failing if they are luring from the word of the Lord because of some satanic cult, then they should correct themselves. If the apostate teacher who is not preaching them the true exegetical word of Bible doctrine and rather replacing it with miracles, healings, or tongues, then he should correct them. If he is being fallen a trap for social interaction, then he should correct them. It is not the forming of social groups that you will be edified or the sweet and carny words that you get along with them saying all such kind of a sheer rot of moral stories that you are going to be edified. No way, no chance at all. The mystery doctrine of the church age, which is very very unique and the greatest privilege given to us of all time demands that we learn the word either from the pastor teacher who is faithfully prepared or a pastor teacher who has recorded and kept these words and listened to them so that they can know the truth and the truth shall set them free until and unless you come and give top priority to learn the word from the virgin language of the scriptures no matter how well you think you are formulating your things it is just a sign of a sheer art of failure in the sight of the lord wherewith you are not only a failure of your own christendom privileged activities but rather it is a sign of your ignorance followed by arrogance in your colossal nature attitude towards Bible doctrine, which is totally indifferent, and rather living a life of such kind of a temporary happiness, thinking that weekly once a church is a great benefit for me. I can do so many things in one weekly going, weekly going once to a church, and I can do the things which are quite essential for me. What a sheer lot of blasphemy is that, because when Bible doctrine in Second Corinthians four sixteen it says, Though your outward man is perishous day by day, but your inward man should be renewed day by day. So exactly that's the principle for a believer, wherewith it is not social interaction, wherewith it is not a chance to attract crowds by giving them such kind of a miracles, healings or emotional ecstasy of music, jumping XYZ. It is not to be fouled out from the word of the Lord because that is the only defensive weapon. At the same time, it is the only offensive weapon for you to rise against such kind of a defensive mechanisms which the world uses, either through Zakir Naik or even the Christian science or even the pantheism, even the theosophy or anything, you name it, they have it. But the Bible doctrine, the word of the Lord is the only weapon to pull down all such kind of false imaginations. Until and unless you give top priority for learning this word, until and unless you take up 
this Bible doctrine more than the physical breath you take and the physical food you consume, no matter how well you think you're performing your deeds, all those things in the sight of the Lord are sheer rot. That is what I have been telling to you, the importance of the fifth phrase, I am thirsty, subdivision of that fifth phrase into seven division points. Point number one, leading the believer from the word. Point number two, apostate leaders who are a major failure whenever we as believers are giving are not giving top priority for the eternal thing which is bible doctrine then it is as simple as that we are renting a room for satan and that satan takes that and it and it just mixes all our chemistry with all irresponsible chemistry elements in the soul and that is what we are being called at the end as a garbage and we are losing out our extra contract and the unique spiritual life wherewith you are not aware that even satan is a slave to you and it knows very well that it has to serve you so what does it do since it is the prince of this world it tries to ruin your life and puts a thought in your mind that you are inferior and you are not been baptized with the Holy Spirit until and unless you speak in tongues you are not being filled of the Spirit and all such kind of a sheer art of blasphemy and it rises some cultic leaders who could call themselves they are miracular persons they have the faith healing power in them and with that they anoint the oil and that is what they are going to ruin your spiritual life because Satan rises such kind of a deception of false spiritual gifts which is our fourth point under the fifth phrase we have been looked the differentiation of this spiritual gifts particularly the pre-canon period which were existed and the post-canon period which are still in existing but those existed gifts were totally seized after the completion of canon and from circa AD 70 none of the believer in the Lord Jesus Christ has legitimately spoken in tongues and tongues is a common and the cheapest gift of all time in the time of a hypostatic union during the incarnate Christ before the completion of canon of scripture could be formulated from the day of Pentecost till to the AD of 70 the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 28 prophecy wherewith with stammering lips and the un and the Gentile language people would come and tell to you in your own language the gospel regarding the Lord Jesus Christ which is a sign of messianship that when they believe upon the Lord they shall be saved but these people they made a failure to such an extent that they not only corrected themselves as the book told them in the previous dispensations before Lord could come ending with the last prophet known as the Malachi which is not only a one prophet name but it is meant to say my messengers and this were the priests of the Lord God Almighty who could tell to them very clearly the lips of the priest should possess knowledge and the people should run to him to learn the law from his mouth but the total contrary the people have failed to learn the law from the priests even as such the people have even failed to know the truth but rather they're giving false priorities and false importance and they have replaced totally the deception and the defunct of false spiritual gifts into force and rising and calling themselves they are miraculous healers they are faith healers they are oil anointed preachers so whenever you take that oil and you apply to your ass they are going to be healed that is what they're going to tell in one of the testimony which I have heard that a woman was suffering with a menstrual problem for more than nine days and when this anointed oil when she touched up with the handkerchief of her hand and she put on the spot where that menstrual cloth was going on the bleeding was totally stopped this is a sheer rot of blasphemy the way these faith healers are giving testimony on behalf of the faith anointed oil wherewith they call it is oil but their people they are not able to realize why Lord used oil as an anointment not for the sake of doing such kind of a miraculous things but to represent them that it is the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit as there is the oil and there is a candle wick the separation of that it is we as a believer the oil represents the Lord God the Holy Spirit ministry in our life and candle wick is our trading manner in our life the wick has to be cleansed with the water of 
the Lord. The oil has to be taken by suction and the gravity force to pull and to take. That's what we are going to take that oil in our lives of a manifestation after the confession of our sins to rebound. It is not that like the previous Old Testament times, yearly ones you go and put for your sins. But in this new dispensation of the church age, every believer is a royal priest. Every believer is an ambassadorship to execute his royal priesthood. He has to confess his sins privately to God the Father and to God the Father alone. It is no way to be concerned with the pastor. It is no way concerned with the Roman church called as Pope. It is no way concerned with each and every father what they call. It is you and you alone are responsible for the decisions that you take and in the privacy of your soul you go there and you confess for your sins and you pray to God the Father so that you can have the things right with you. Since such kind of faith healers or miraculous persons have cast off which is good, that is divine good, good of intrinsic value which is Bible doctrine, Satan or their enemy shall pursue them. And they are going to survive in this ministry by such kind of a false spiritual gifts of deception use that they are not only during themselves of their escrow contract which is so unique in this unique dispensation of the church age but rather they are during even the millions of people who are following them and satan doesn't want them to know the truth if they know the truth the truth shall set them free but it wants to make them void of their spiritual growth even in the eternity which shows forth as zero zero point zero zero because whatsoever they have done in the energy of the flesh it will be totally burnt off whatsoever they done again in the energy of satan that also will be totally burnt off the only good which the people should take into consideration is bible doctrine which is of divine importance and which is of divine good the people fail to take it into their hearts the people fail to realize that bible doctrine should be given top priority as israel cast off that which was good and the trumpet was blown during the period of hosea exactly the people were being pursued by satan and their enemy the same thing is happening in today's Christendom. People doesn't want to stick on to the integrity of Bible doctrine. They want to use such kind of a deception and defunct function of false spiritual gifts. But the church age, which has been sandwiched the, between the two advents of the first advent of my Lord and the second advent of my Lord, the Lord wants to build this church purely upon Bible doctrine. And if they fail to give top priority, even if he is a preacher or an evangelist, the permanent spiritual gifts which are into force, that is, the pastor, teacher, evangelist, the gift of administration to the help to the church, and the helps wherewith they offer offerings so that the perpetuation of the gospel could go as a missionary to other nations, but it is a fate of today's Christendom that missionary people are Pentecostal to the core, who do not know what exactly is the importance of Bible doctrine, but rather they are giving top priorities to deception of such kind of a spiritual gifts that speaking in tongues when they lay hands, when they jump around, when they do in emotion, when they do in ecstasy, and they are replacing biblical truth with all such kind of a failure. But the duty of a missionary is what? When he goes as an evangelist, he trains them up. That is, he first builds them up by making them as a believer, but as a... But, he trains them up by giving them the gospel. But a believer who is edified in a local church from a right designated authority of pastor teacher who teaches from exegetical, categorical, nisogical background of the subject, the believer who has been mature, the evangelist who works as a dual function, not only as a gift of an evangelist, even as a gift of a person who could train up, who are there, who can take the responsibility upon his shoulders and who could tell the importance of biblical truth. Such kind of a person who goes there as a missionary like the William Carey, who worked as a pastor in London and then came back to India to preach the gospel. After preaching the gospel, after 11 years, when he had the first convert and then he started to change the things into the Bible of their of our respective languages of our states and then he has formulated the Bible and he started to start up a theological seminary college known as Sarampur which is so great in India which was so great to correct my talk because it is not the same as it was there because the same Bible uh, but in the Bible colleges where there are libraries, the library should be read as told in Isaiah chapter 35. Open you the book of the Lord and you read. But those Bible libraries are being replaced with 
a dungeon cells wherewith the humans are using for the sake of their toilet and those libraries are being totally closed and they have been sealed off. The failure on the part of a pastor teacher to impart the importance of the learning of Bible doctrine and giving that in return as a form of a missionary to the going place where they are going, that is what it yields for such kind of a library to become as a dungeon cell filled with sheer rot of a shit of a human human excreta. That is what exactly the word that I have to use. Those libraries are being filled with human excreta. There are no books. The tables are being rampant here and there. And if you could lower, if you go and ask to the principal of the college, he says that those books are given to one of a place known as Hyderabad, and they are taken it into consideration. And whether they are teaching the doctrine, whether they are giving that importance, we do not know. But the fact is, sure, every pulpit has been occupied with such kind of a person who doesn't preach with exegesis. If the pain and the burden given by the missionary, if it was right, this missionary people would have taught to them the importance of preaching the word from exegesis and these missionaries, when they go with the evangelist, they train up, they formulate the youth, if not the church congregation, who are in return capable of understanding Bible doctrine. So they train them up from the basic fundamentals through the concept of dispensations so that the subject of dispensations could make them very clearly to understand that they are in a new age and we are being called as kinekatesis. And this kinekatesis in the Greek is what we are being given with unique privilege and unique opportunity and unique assets wherewith we can reach to the status of maximum glorification of God and become a winner believer only when we learn through passing of the spiritual adulthood of our life of stages wherewith spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy and spiritual maturity are taken into consideration only when we pass the suffering and miracles or healings are not designed to elevate this suffering but rather make a progress growth though you are having such kind of a hindrances are you giving top priority for bible doctrine or not and whenever such kind of a false preachers who rise and say that i have the power of miracle i have the power of healing do not follow that those who are the gifts and signs used to show forth the sign of messiah in the hypostatic union that is the resuscitation wherein the dead persons could be raised like the lazarus whom lord delayed so that he could die and the people could realize that it was a sign of messiahship that he was been performed among them even as such speaking in tongues circa AD 70 was the end so that the fulfillment of Isaiah prophecy in the book of 28th chapter in Isaiah they could realize that how the Gentile languages would come with the stammering lips and could tell to them what exactly is Messiah and how is the truth the failure on the part to give top priority is a failure which my Lord told to them during his earthly ministry in his incarnate form have you not read about me have you not known about me you are not discerning the scriptures rightly that is what it's a failure for them to realize that he was messiah so when they totally failed to believe the dispensation was being given common invitation to the entire world it was not only to the royal jews but it is to the entire human race from where Abraham was being called the same Gentile man, the same Gentile nations, what we have been given the same invitation in the time of epochs, that we believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and we shall be saved. And that believing is what now you are a church, irrespective, you may be a Jew, but you are not being called as a Jew. You may be a Greek, you are not a Greek. You may be a Babylon, you are not a Babylon, but you are only one, that is the church. You are a Christian in Christ. And what is a Christian without reflecting Bible doctrine? He is nothing thing if it doesn't have the same attitude which Apostle Paul told us to have the attitude of Lord Jesus Christ that he gave top priority for his Bible doctrine in his humanity and that's the importance of the fifth phrase the failure to learn the truth the failure to give top priority the failure of the missionary the failure of the church so that they cannot rise up missionaries and send which is the primary target and the goal of the church many of the people have become volatile in the lust pattern of the sin nature of this world that's why ministry is not a means so that they can earn their living ministry is to show forth the power of God for maximum glorification by manufacturing the believers of excellent integrity of Bible doctrine and that excellent integrity of Bible doctrine is what we call the winner believer or maximum glorification of Lord believers who in return are called in the sight of the Lord a great ones recorded and kept in the history pillar of Revelation 3 
well. And that duty of the pastor teacher is to temporarily sacrifice his life, not to go for a seminary for four years or five years, where it, in today's Christendom you don't have a proper seminary which give priority for Bible doctrine in the origin languages of the scriptures, but they are replacing with Christian activism and Christian legalisms, and these people who come and preach in the pulpits, who do not even know what exactly, and the mystery doctrine of the church age, what we have to learn from it, where we are, what we are doing, where we will be going, and how is it without Bible doctrine we cannot survive. It is a failure, not only part of the part parts of the pulpit, but rather it is a failure on part of the individual believer who doesn't even know whether he has a gift of pastor teacher until and unless he he diligently studies the word of the Lord and he preaches and he comes to know as yes, this is the responsibility upon my shoulder I have the gift of pastor teacher and I have to be prepared more and more more and more more and more like a drudge dig the original language of the scripture what is there in that original language why I'm reading only this translation what are the errors in the translation what doctrinal summary of errors I'm giving to my flock because when you go and if you want to take and buy a food food for your own family what you do you look to the nutritional content and you say that whether this food has been expired or what what is the nutritional content in it whether it is good or not, whether it is hygienic or not, when you, for your physical food, you think so many times what is right you want to take, you do not take a rotten vegetables for your own stomach, but rather you take the best and the fresh one, why is it not to the congregation when you are feeding them the spiritual manna? Why are you not able to realize what was there in the past, what is there now, what is there in the future, but the promises of the Lord, they are the same, they are not going to be changed, that is for absolutely sure, and it is quite dogmatic, whenever we stick on to the integrity of God, that shows forth the immutable and the veracity of my Lord irrespective of the dispensations but what we have doctrinally is what is our process is we have to grow up it is not as such that still you are not being baptized at the moment of baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit the oil which I was telling to you that is the power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit it is not the oil as such kind of a faith healers heal and give to you to buy that oil for you which is a sure out of a lie and it is sure out of a blasphemy and the faith healers or the holy rollers are maximum to the core of evil in today's Christendom, not giving top priority for Bible doctrine. And these holy rulers want to join hand with Roman Catholicism so that they both can become one as a lost child, as a prodigal one, and they can in return worship the Lord and the true Yahweh. Because the Roman Catholicism has told evolution, if not the Big Bang Theory, has been used by God as an error of them not to realize that Lord created more than less than of a wink of an eye of a second that he could create everything by formulation of his word far less he could use such kind of an evolution theory or big bang theory and rise such kind of a cult to our christendom these people who are not even having the knowledge of subject of genesis 1 1 which clearly opposes atheist materialist pantheist even as such this evolutionist everyone whomsoever you name it everyone are been ruled out in genesis 1 1 that is the importance and the power of my lord god almighty by the roman catholicism agreed and announced about such kind of a things of big bang theory and evolution theory the people could realize what is their status quo of bible doctrine when these people they are inviting pentecostal movement which is 50 to 60 percent of apostate to the core in today's christendom you could realize what sort of doctrinal content this Pentecostal people also will have. They are not having any doctrinal content apart from the edification wherewith they think when they're speaking in tongues they are totally being edified and that is a sure art of a lie of blasphemy and that blasphemy will be taken care by the demon known as Angastra Muthas in the Hebrew Ava which controls their vocal cords and these vocal cords are being in return used to duplicate the process of my Lord which has been used till AD 70 and those people when they used the Gentile people who were speaking, they were speaking the language of the Lord, which is called as a Hebrew, and it was having a philology, it was having a dialect, so that they could realize and they could understand the truth, and by understanding the truth, they could know, how are these people in the early morning of our, they have drunk and they're speaking in our languages, no, they're not drunk, now they're not drunk of the Spirit, but rather they're telling them their fate, if they fail to believe upon Lord Jesus Christ in these 40 years, then in AD 70, they shall be put into the fifth cycle of discipline, which is a sheer right tougher sin in the sight of the Lord not to accept the Messiah though he was manifested to them in the form of a human flesh the failure for them is what the failure number one told in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 not to 
implement the synagogues, which is a Bible college. And in the Anger Bible Dictionary, we have a note upon the school of the Hebrews, wherewith they say in one of the volumes regarding the Jesus times of volume number two, page number 215 to 218, Ashdras, I think, is the author. He says very clearly to us, if any place wherewith there is no proper Bible college, wherein they cannot communicate the truth accurately, in the first century where he has written this topic regarding Lord Jesus Christ, it says to them, that place should be totally excommunicated and that place should be totally destroyed. Because they don't have proper Bible college wherewith they can teach them from the virginal languages of the scriptures. And if you are surviving in that place where there is no Bible college to you, where there is no proper honor of the synagogue, when the people of Deuteronomy failed to do that, after the captivity they realized what failure was that, and that thing they totally changed to the synagogues. Having the order of worship weekly thrives. Morning 6 to 10, 10 to 2, and then a gap of 2 to 6, and then a night service from 6 to 10. There were not even a place to sing a song. There was only a preacher who could preach the truth. There was only a communicator of Bible doctrine. That's why we find in the coming of the time of Ezra, where he comes prepared in his heart that he should preach the truth to the congregation and he should rise up the elders. The failure of that exactly in BC4 of my Lord, the way he claimed in his things told to their father and mother in, when he was 12 years old, having not known that I'm here to come to do my father's business. Have we not told that my meat is to do for Lord God's will? Have we not known that I have come to do His work? And reprimandly exhortation towards such kind of Pharisees and Sadducees. Have we not read about me in the Bible? Have we not known what exactly the Bible tells about me? Have we not learned the scriptures? And have you, have you taken it to a wrong interpretation of the scriptures? What a sure art of a blasphemy towards those people who were telling that they know scriptures but they could not recognize Lord. That is what exactly is happening in today's Christendom. They say that they know the truth, but they do not know exactly what is the truth. These people who do not even have the things which have been told by Lord exactly the way how the Jeremiah tells to them, these people have not sent them, these prophets have not sent them, but they came, their vision is nothing, their thoughts are nothing, they come to nothing. That's what Lord Jesus Christ writes them through the prophet Isaiah. But in return, he tells to the same prophet Isaiah that he shall send pastors of his own heart who shall fill you with knowledge and with understanding in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Are we the pastors who are grazing with knowledge and with understanding to train the flock, to make them to realize that Messiah could come? Yes, he is the Messiah. How much more you want to become a failure in the sight of the Lord. How much more you do not want to give top priority for Bible doctrine. The failure of you not to learn the importance of the fifth phrase. Wherewith Lord's hum entire humanity is centered upon that fifth phrase. It is a desire of God the Father that we as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ could have the same absorption, same reverence, same realization towards Bible doctrine. How long you want to be a failure not to give top priority, it is left to you. And since the tape is too long, we shall have a word of prayer and once again review the dispensations so that why these dispensations and the reason for dispensations and how they have been divided into times and epochs and ages and administrations. Because when we learn these things, we can realize that Bible doctrine should be given top priority. When we, the Christendom believers, are not able to realize this truth, that there is a dispensation, there is a times and epochs, there is a thing wherewith the false deception of uh, spiritual gifts are into force, like these miracles, healings, or tongues, or X, Y, Z, where is such kind of things that are happening? Why is it these people, they are not able to realize? How important it is for them to know the truth. How important it is for them to understand the truth. How important it is for them when these believers only not able to get to learn such kind of a concepts of Bible doctrine. How they can go and debate with such kind of a sure art of a blasphemy who is Zachariah, who doesn't even have a spiritual alive in him. That is his dichotomy and he's spiritually dead. And he thinks he can 
digest very well the spiritual phenomena and he can come back. And such kind of a people in the sight of the Lord, they are called as infidels and not an upright person. If you are an upright person, you could know what are the emotions and desires of your heart and what you are preaching because you are telling them out of context of the subject, not reading the full subject and telling to them that he was not crucified, he was disguised and why the stones were rolled, why he was not crucified, gum, why he was not being used flagellum. When your conscience is right, when you are an upright man, you could tell to them by reading in depth accurately what is there in the word. Not just taking the things as your mind wants and tell to the people and represent even Bible falsely to them. That shows you are not an upright man. If you are an upright man, Hebrews 4.12 very clearly says, it is a discerner of thought and it is an intense of the heart. It clearly discerns your thoughts and your evil intents if it is evil or if it is right of your heart, even that intentions are being totally corrected, are being changed, are being formulated for your growth. Since you are not an upright man, you do not know how to take the things which are quite essential for us to understand. And today, if the time permits, we shall look the dispensation of times and epochs or age, or age and administrations, but prior to that, we shall learn what is the reason for the dispensations and an overview of yesterday's dispensation outline, so that the things which have taken from the book of Robert Bunker Thime, pages of Divine Outline of History, the dispensation on the churches, we take it from page number 6 till to the page number of 16, because the understanding of the truth is what we are required, and the ministry of Robert Bunker Thime is a grace ministry. He is no way to charge for the grace of the Lord is giving absolutely free the things for you to read it, to get it, to learn it. But the problem on your part is you do not have that integrity to stick on, to learn the truth and to become a preacher of Bible doctrine wherewith you could realize as you grow up that you have the gift of a pastor teacher and the communication gift of the pastor teacher is to provide sound spiritual food or spiritual manna, which is of green pastures recognized in the Bible, not to provide them the rotten or the sheer rot of hypocritical food, wherein you know very well that is dead expired, and you know very well that this food doesn't give you any hygienic matter, then too, by following such kind of a things, you think that you're doing right and you can get the things which are quite essential for it to be done, which is a sheer rot of a lie and which is a sheer rot of a blasphemy, because Pastor Rakudin failed to give top priority for Bible doctrine, so he was failure in the debate. Even as such, you believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you fail to give top priority for biblical truth, you are going to fail in your escrow life, wherewith that is your only eternal reward and a sign for you to be shown in the judgment seat of Christ. So we use privacy of a priesthood, that is 1 John 1 9. We shall have a word of prayer by the confession of our sins to rebound and come back and look the outline of review, even as such, the reason for dispensation. And if the time permits, we shall look time and epochs and age and administration. But we shall have a word of prayer first and look into the subject. We thank you, Father, for the privilege that are given to us to have fellowship with you through the word. We pray that God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in the things that are quite essential for us to know the truth. Because, Lord, each and everything that we do, it is for your glory. Each and every word that we speak, that has to be for your glory. Lord, correct us if you are not according to thy word. Because, Lord, everything what you recognize is exactly in your word. And you have given it in the form of a Bible doctrine, the 66 completed canon of scripture of books, so that we can discern what were the pre-canon gifts and what were the post-canon post -canon gifts. Even as such, we are here to tell to the maximum, like an unprofitable slave, as a bond slave being our duty, that they listen the word of the truth and they correct themselves. Because, Lord, it is our duty to proclaim like a herald, like the Kerusothon Logan, and what information they collect, how they collect, how they take it, how they do it, it is all left to them, because it is you who are going to do it. But it is our duty to show forth, to burn in that candle wick by consuming your oil, being under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we, we, we ask that God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things that we are going to study. Father, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. So in yesterday's step, we have been looking at the outline of dispensations, wherewith it has been taken into three subheads. Uh, that is what, again, in those three subheads, we shall formulate into, again, subdivisions. The first one, it is called as theocentric dispensation. And in that, we have noted the dispensation of the Gentiles and the dispensation of the Israel. So the dispensation of the Gentiles, it starts from Genesis 1 to Genesis 
to Exodus 11. And in that, again, the category divided into the dispensation of the Gentiles, we have the age of positive volition from, cre from creation of Adam till to the fall of man. That is from Genesis 1.26 to Genesis 3.6. The age of negative volition from the fall of man till to Abraham, that is Genesis 3.7 till to Genesis 11.32. Then we have the Jewish patriarchs from Abraham till to the under Moses of Genesis 12 through Exodus 11. And then we start the dispensation of the Israel starting from the Exodus until the birth of Christ. That is from 1441 to 4 BC, which ranges from Exodus 12 to Malachi. In that we have the subdivision number one, the theocratic kingdom from Exodus to Samuel, that is from 1441 to 1020 BC. The United Kingdom from Seoul to Rehoboam from 1020 to 926 BC. The Northern Kingdom from Jeroboam to Hosea, 926 to 721 BC. The Southern Kingdom from Rehoboam to Jadikia, 926 to 586 BC. And then the restored nation of Judah, that is from Nehemiah to Lord Jesus Christ, which has been told in 516 to 4 BC. So then we have the Christocentric dispensation, which is subdivided into two parts, the dispensation of the hypostatic union and the church age. The hypostatic union, which is the incarnation of the first advent of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the era of the New Testament Gospels, which began from 4 BC to AD 30. And then we have from AD 30 till to the resurrection or rapture of the church. That is what we have been known as this. And again, in this period of uh, till 1896, the church age, which is from the Pentecostal day till to the completion of canon scripture, we divide into two parts. Number one, the pre-canon period, the era commencing with the book of Acts and continuing until John wrote Revelation, completing the canon of scripture from AD 30 to 96. And then we have the post-canon period, the current age, which is governed by the Christ upper room discourse from John 14 to 17, and the New Testament epistles and Romans 2, 3 from AD 96 till to the rapture could occur. And then we have the third subhead known as the eschatology dispensations in that we have two things number one the tribulation and number two the millennium the tribulation approximately seven years from the rapture of the church to the second advent of Christ prophesied in the Old Testament which is Christ's Oliver discourse in Matthew 24 and 25 and those, those divisions of Revelation chapter 6 through 19 and Revelation chapter 6 through 19 further divided into two parts the greater tribulation and the lesser tribulation the lesser tribulation which is called as Satan's failed utopia from the rapture until Satan's expulsion from heaven which is three and one half year into the tribulation and then we have the great tribulation that is from satan's expulsion until the second advent of christ where with at the end at the middle it wants to come but it doesn't happen and then we have the eschatological dispensation the second category known as the millennium the thousand year reign of lord jesus christ on this earth from his second advent to the end of human history prophesied throughout the old testament and what we have in the book of revelation chapter 20. so this in return, which have been interchangeably used for epoch, our time, our age, our administration is what we look into consideration. But today, since the tape is too long, even as such, the time is also too short, we shall only note the reason for dispensations, and tomorrow we shall take the times and epochs and age and administration, because when such kind of an unruly evil, who is senseless, reckless, extravagant, arrogant idiot, who doesn't even know what exactly is biblical truth, who is not even born, being a trichotomous in nature for God's soul, he, for God's eternal life, he thinks that he can understand the spiritual phenomena, but being spiritually dead, he cannot even know what and how to discern the truth because even in my christian believers many of the people do not even know what exactly is the divine outline of history towards man which god formulated so that it could become an easy understanding of the subject for them in their own things so the reason for dispensations in their own things in the sense when a pastor teacher was faithfully prepared could tell them could make them to realize what are they what is the kind of catechesis rather than the rational species wherewith they have been formulated. So the reasons for dispensations, many principles, policies and procedures that God establishes remain constant throughout the history. But no careful student of the Bible can overlook certain changes that distinguish one epoch of Bible history from another. Why does God alter his administration of human history? He does so to reveal his unchanging glory, wisdom and power under different conditions. From God's eternal perspective, the ultimate in this long and varied demonstration of his character is the relationship between Christ and the church in which the believer is in union 
with Christ as told in Ephesians 1, 17 to 23, Ephesians 3, 10, and Ephesians 3, 20, 21. The explanation for this multifaceted divine revelation, which unfolds throughout human history, lies in the ancient conflict. What is that ancient co conflict? Before human history began, Satan revolted against God, as told in Isaiah 14, 13 through 14, and Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 16 through 18. Satan and the host of angels who joined his revolution evidently were brought to trial and were convicted for their sentences recorded in scripture of Matthew 25, 41. The sentence of fallen angels to eternal fire was pronounced before mankind existed. Why then was the execution of sentence postponed until after human history ends as told in Revelation 20, 10, which is the end of the millennium? Satan objected to God's verdict just as he continues to contend against God. Any objection to perfect divine judgment slanders the character of God. That is the perfect integrity of God. And a man who is upright, though he is not having this integrity, if he is upright to his own righteousness, which his, uh, which his religion demands as such, this Quran, if not the Buddhism, to the integrity of his heart, he could say to his conscience, what he is reading from the Bible is not being told fully, but rather taking only some few or two or three points and suspecting them and telling them and really making a deceiving nature towards their congregation wherewith they are hearing them and it is a sure out of a lie and a blasphemy to them because they do not know the truth because as such they cannot read the bible but they think this man has read and is telling is right and in return it is a slander towards the character of my god because my lord says it is not a slander of character towards my god it is a slander towards the human nature itself because his conscience is not clear and is not upright and such kind of a man is always a deceiver and a traitor and that's what Zakir Naik has done towards his Muslim community because he has not made them to realize or even to read when he was debating over the point of whether Christ crucified on the cross or not to read them to make them to understand the in-depth of the scripture of the subject of the things which he could read and the people could hear and they could realize what exactly was there in the Bible he was just taking the things and he was telling why he was not crucified him so that the scripture might be so that the scripture might be fulfilled he says since he was not crucified it shows that he was not crucified which is a sure rot of a lie and all these things such kind of an unright an upright man if he comes and preaches it will be the same but it is our duty to defend ourselves to tell them the truth to make them to realize though they are unbelievers they could realize what is the truth because we are here told to walk two miles when they are asked to walk only one mile so God in a momentous action God convened an appeal trial in which he would demonstrate his perfect character as told in Psalms 145-21, Zechariah 3-1-10, Luke 2-14, Romans 9-23, Romans 11-25-36, while allowing Satan every opportunity to prove his own case as told in Job 1-12, or Job 2-6, Matthew 4-1-11, in the case of Lord Jesus Christ, God created mankind to resolve the angelic conflict in human history for our benefit and for the benefit of the angels. God magnificently answers every aspect of Satan's objection in the prehistoric trial simultaneously Satan is attempting to prove himself equal with God as told in Isaiah 14 14 but the devil displays only arrogance incompetence and evil which confirms his guilt human history is the appeal trial of angelic conflict the numerous and diverse aspects of God's wisdom are revealed through mankind and most dramatically through the church to the rulers to the authorities, that is the fallen angels, and in the heavenly places as told in Ephesians 3.10 in comparison with 6.12 of the same book of Ephesians. As the appeal trial of Satan unfolds, the grace of God and the perfect justice of his verdict are proven again and again. God introduces changes into his administration of human history in order to present his case, disapprove Satan's case, and deliver a decisive closing argument. These changes produce the dispensations. That's why God introduced this dispensation, the change of administration of human history so that he can present his case which is disapproving to Satan's, Satan's case and deliver a decisive closing argument so that in each and every age though Lord Jesus Christ was being appeared in Genesis 3.15 and then the promise which has been fulfilled during his incarnate Christ, everything could be very clearly told to them and very clearly made an understanding for them. But these people, a failure to realize these dispensations, the change which produces these dispensations is a failure for them not to discern the truth and not to give top priority for Bible doctrine. And these things we shall look in depth tomorrow because the time is too long and as we remain... <coughs> 
faithful to be feeding upon the word of the Lord. And it has been a duty on my part to record every day at least one hour of message and put in the YouTube so that the people can take it wherever they want it, even free of cost. That's the ministry which my guru, Robert Bunker Thime, has taught me. We are no way to charge the grace of God. It is God's grace that he, and we wish to reflect it. And that's what we do it freely, freely, freely. We are not here to charge any of the things. We are here to give them free of cost. Because in a country like India, the people who are surviving in the ministry for only 45 to 100 rupees a month, how can we tell them to buy big lexicons or big, big Bibles, which have been written by Edwin Bullinger, if not the Dick, if not the Schofield, which are too costly for them to provide. So it is the only duty on our part to give them free of cost, even if it's possible, record and send them tapes, as my guru has done in USA. And I am being a recipient of his ministry. I know what a grace reflection he has done and it is our duty to pass down that because there is more richness in giving rather than receiving like this intelligent beggars who beg for money and cruise you for your tithes wherewith the new dispensation of the church age doesn't require your tithe to be paid you are absolutely free of your tithe you are being here to give as your lord prospers in your heart not as a compulsory of your tithe. And even in the begging ministry, so many people beg by putting in the TV with their intellectual beggars, which we call them. They're considering themselves they are doing great ministry in the sight of the Lord. But a day will come when Messiah was being there in the midst of them. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Jews failed to realize them. The same thing, Lord will fail to realize you because you are not in alignment with his word until and unless you correct and you align with his word to learn the integrity of his word, which is not to slander his character, his Lord, his character always demands that we stick on to the integrity of Bible doctrine. And no matter, you may remain poor in this earth of your ministry, but you are being faithful to Lord. Lord will bless you with the things which he wants you to be blessed, because that blessing is a permanent happiness, not with such kind of a cursing of the blessing, wherewith Lord assumes it is a curse, and he curses you. But you think in this worldly matter of apostate pulpits and leaders, what you're doing is right, and the things you're doing is right, so you have been happy by providing. Now, when I started my ministry, I had a cycle, bicycle, but now I have a car, how my Lord is blessed with me. No way, no chance at all. If you have a bicycle or if you have a car, that is not the material blessing which Lord wants you. You should realize Satan is prospering you. The only blessing what you can tell, the only happiness what the preacher, even as the congregation can have, and the material blessing, what they have, blessing is what the happiness, in other words, Macarius in the Greek, what they have is that when the preacher is preaching them the accurate word. If he's failing to preach them the accurate word, no matter what he thinks he's doing, all those things in the sight of the Lord are Shia rat. They are not at all the blessing. That is what Satan tries to trap you by converting you into such kind of a cultic moments and of this deception of false spiritual gifts and avoiding in your pulpit not to preach the exegesis, but rather telling you, since you have done this, you have been blessed, you are so great, and you are even making falsely to follow your congregation. And how long you as a pastor teacher want to transgress the covenant of the Lord and trespass his law? Why is it that you are not able to correct yourself and to give top priority for biblical truth? Why do you want to deceive the congregation? Correct yourself. The time is very short. The length is very short. The duty for you is to learn the truth and to preach the truth. Don't follow such kind of a false gimmicks. The world will come to know one day if you even cry unto the Lord, the Lord will say, I don't know who you are. Exactly, that should not be your fate because though you may be considering that you're doing so much of a miraculous healings or tongues and the people are answering and understanding your moral teachings and they're changing themselves, no way until and unless a person looks into the depth of Bible doctrine because Bible represents the mirror until and unless he could see the truth from the mirror, he cannot change his old attitude. He cannot change his emotions. He cannot change his desires. He cannot change his thoughts because what comes from the filthiness of your heart is what the mouth speaks. But what goes inside is Bible doctrine when you take into your thoughts and that thought should cleanse your heart. That garbage should be cleansed off 
the frame of reference only thing which is available for you to take is bible doctrine that's why bible has been symbolically represented for water who is thirsty come and take the ministry of lord god the holy spirit that is freely given because till that time the church was not into formulation every believer who believes upon the lord jesus christ has been indwelled by lord god the holy spirit and controlled by lord god the holy spirit through rebound which is one permanent the other one is temporary when you sin your out of fellowship when you come back through a confession of your sins you have been controlled of lord god the holy spirit that lord god the holy spirit when you consider it as a water of the bible the word of god you cleanse each and every day that word by taking into consideration the things which are quite essential for you to learn the truth and understand the truth if you are void of the truth if you are running out of the truth please have a prayer towards the lord and ask lord lord i desire to know the truth and it is the duty of the lord to send you that information do not follow such kind of a gimmicks do not become a trap to such kind of a satan evilly core people but rather understand the truth stick on to the integrity of bible doctrine god has told through his prophets particularly paul and peter that we have been told to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of bible doctrine paul commending ourselves to the grace and even to his word which is able to build up he has not given to any other things but rather to stick on and to give top priority for bible doctrine that's why but in the, if we have that's why we have in osea 83 not to cast off that is good because if you cast off which is good enemy will perceive you that is what it is happening the good is bible doctrine do not cast off the teaching of bible doctrine from a right pastor teacher who shall preach you from exegetical categorical and isogical subject of the study because if you cast off that which is divine good satan automatically comes and pursues you for your own destruction as such since being satan's world false teachers are many zakir naik has also rise to the core but we do not have anything to do with him because he is spiritually dead we know he cannot even pluck a hair of us because the way he teaches is not even concern for us to even have but it is our duty to defend our lord's integrity and show forth to them he is always faithful he is immutable and he is the same he is veracity forever and forever because he is the only one who reigns forever and forever so as we continue tomorrow the further explanation of the importance of the fifth phrase where with it has been my duty to warn even to the past teachers even to the believers even as such to correct themselves because top priority should be given for bible truth if they do not have bible truth in their minds in their souls in their hearts then whatsoever they are going to do it is just as a sure rot of a lie when they would call to the god god would say i don't know who you are that should not become your fate god recognizes you as he recognizes you at the moment of salvation you for you are eternal life because of the saving work which has been imputed to you by faith alone in christ alone for the imputed righteousness through lord jesus christ exactly lord recognizes you because of your works and your deeds what you do as per the word of the lord demands and that you cannot do until and unless you know the truth that's why the principle of john 8:32 you shall know the doctrine and the doctrine shall set you free if you do not know the doctrine how the doctrine can set you free so we are here to be in alignment with god's word and that's possible for us only when we know the truth and the truth can be learned from a right pastor teacher who gives top priority in his pulpit only for bible doctrine and our faith should not become like the captivity written synagogues where with they even couldn't have time for a prayer the captain learning the truth that should be a revival if there is any revival in our christian dam as we continue this tomorrow we shall have our things but the closing moments are dedicated to those who are here without christ without hope and without eternal life that in the privacy of their soul in order to believe they express the words which are quite essential for them to know and to realize that believing upon the lord jesus christ they shall be saved and this is the thing which we are here to tell them in that lord jesus christ who had you in your, you, you he, whom he had you in your mind he died for you and for your sins on the cross and what you do the sin a sin of unbelief that is you do not believe upon the lord jesus christ and that by believing upon him 
you shall be saved. And that you can tell inaudibly to God the Father, and it is not any experience or emotion so that you could feel that you are being saved, you are doing X, Y, Z, no way, no chance at all. It is by faith alone, in Christ alone, you doesn't feel any difference, but your volition, that's what it makes the thing. And the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, occurs to you at that moment, because it is the Spirit alone which can change us, our condition, our state, our character towards the subject towards the object which is capable of doing it and it is a fact that Lord God the Holy Spirit has the power to change our character to change our state to change our condition to change our character that is from sin to, to eternal life to change our state wherewith in position we all are dead in Adam but now new position in Christ we all are alive and our condition from eternal death that is dichotomy to trichotomous that is eternal life that is we call as an everlasting life which has a beginning but has no ending but lord has an eternal life and these things we shall look tomorrow but a prayer for you on our behalf a plea for you that you believe upon the lord jesus christ because that is the ministry of baptism of lord god the holy spirit in its common and efficacious grace to provide you that eternal life and that eternal life is what is your fate and is your future that you and your attitude toward Christ is where you hand up. Either you hang in eternity of eternal life or you hang in eternity of eternal death. Choice is yours. Think and do it. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege that you have given to us to have fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things that we have studied, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. And at the same time, as we continue this subject tomorrow, give us more depth of information which is in accord to thy word. Because each and every word we have to speak, it has to be for your eternal glory, and not for this world. Because, Lord, the world will perish, we know that. But your word, which are honored about everything else, shall stand and abide forever and forever. So, Father, we commit each and everything into your hands. To this extent, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, make it a source of blessing and challenge the subject what you have studied, and give top priority in our pulpits for exegetical, categorical, and isagogical subject. And that should be the only revival, as the revival that occurred during the period of the synagogues, after their captivity return, only to teach the word, teach the word, teach the word, which is Caruso Con Logan. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.